Hi guys, so Boris Johnson seems to be facing an unlikely Tory rebellion over food and general poverty. So the Prime Minister is facing a backbench rebellion this autumn over plans to cut universal credit. Steve Baker, a Brexiteer and Member of Parliament for Wigham constituency in Buckinghamshire, asked the government not to ignore the cost of living faced by people who he said are in real trouble and are being tipped over the edge into financial ruin by the pandemic. The current plan, which has been confirmed by the Work and Pension Secretary, Therese Coffey, is to remove the uplift of £20 to those on universal credit. It is expected to be gone by the end of next month. As difficult as it may be to believe, there are Tories who have complained about this, although I believe it's more about protecting themselves from a backlash than any real concern for those on universal credit. The government is considering providing an alternative once the cuts come into force. Direct payments to those in poverty has been one idea floated. However, Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, has made it clear that any new spending plans must be balanced by tax rises. We've seen recently how the NHS staff were offered a pay rise of just 3%, but this was to be paid from the existing NHS budget. Now, Steve Baker suggested that universal credit be overhauled, not just retaining the uplift, he wants the requirement of a wait of five weeks to be removed. This waiting period has been blamed for driving many claimants into debt, which many struggle to get out of. The size of the rebellion is quite small at the moment, but some famous Tories have joined in. The original architect of Universal Credit, Ian Duncan Smith, Amber Rudd and Esther McVeigh, to name a few. The Labour Party is hoping, if not to defeat the government with the help of the rebels, at least make the government think twice about pushing forward with such a cut. The summer recess could be the right time for the Labour Party and the rebels to get more MPs on board. However, it seems within Rishi Sunak's department, there is no appetite for maintaining the uplift. He and his boss Boris Johnson seem more interested in pushing the idea of focusing on jobs. But this risks backfiring as the economy is still very unstable. There's also the issue of furlough, which will mean that many people will lose their jobs and then be forced onto universal credit. About 14% of Steve Baker's constituency has been identified by a university study as going hungry, while about 30% struggle to afford food. This means that they are relying on food banks even though they are on universal credit. The university study found that groups that we would normally not associate with poverty are now falling into it. It seems more and more middle class people are struggling to pay rent, pay bills and have to resort to food bank usage. Wigan, while generally affluent, is ranked 281 out of 317 in the Index of Deprivation in England. Thousands of people there are either furloughed or on universal credit as a result of the pandemic. This has in turn caused many to struggle to pay high rents and living costs. The One Can Trust food bank in Wigan experienced a 350% rise in demand for food parcels during the pandemic. It said the study exposed the scale of poverty in the area. While for some people it may be temporary, others are facing a permanent state of poverty. So, is Steve Baker truly concerned about what's happening in his constituency, or is this an attempt to look good before a possible early general election? Well, let's see. So, if we look at Steve Baker's voting record in the House of Commons, we can see on the issue of welfare and benefits, almost always voted against spending more public money to create guaranteed jobs for young people. Consistently voted for making local councils responsible for helping those in financial need afford their, their council tax. Of course, this is about offloading responsibility from central government to local government. Consistently voted against raising welfare benefits in line with prices. So he wants people to remain poor. Consistently voted for a reduction in spending on welfare benefits, consistently voted for reducing house, housing benefit for social tenants deemed to have excess bedrooms, what Labour described as the bedroom tax, and finally consistently voted against paying higher benefits over long per longer periods of time for those unable to work due to illness or disability. So when Steve Baker presents himself as some sort of hero, well we have to look at his record and his record is the absolute opposite. Why is Steve Baker doing this? Well, there's possible and a possible election coming and he wants to look good in front of his constituents. 
saying that he's fighting their be on their behalf. Well, in reality, he's not. He hasn't. And I don't trust him to do it now. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?